Welcome back to Civil Wars. I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is on moral hazard. So we're still talking about international interventions, and to recall from the past, we've seen that international interventions can decrease the cost of war, thereby promoting efficiency, and we usually think efficiency is a good thing, that saving on the cost of war is a good thing, and so international interventions are good as a result. Now, in the last couple of lectures, we saw one reason that international interventions can be bad. They might actually cause the start of war because a biased intervention on one side might lead a competing faction inside of a state to declare a war before that international intervention becomes possible, essentially starting a preventative war to stop a shift in power that would be detrimental to the side that's initiating the war. Well, what we're going to be seeing in this lecture is how international interventions can actually cause wars, not because of some sort of biased intervention with this preventative war logic, but in a situation where international interventions are actually doing the quote-unquote right thing and stopping wars and stopping the costs of wars from being paid, which is going to improve both sides' welfare inside of the conflict. The issue, however, is that we cannot judge the usefulness of an international intervention by only looking at cases where international interventions happened. That's more or less selecting on the dependent variable, and we've seen in the past when we were talking about sanctions how selecting on the dependent variable can result in some invalid inferences being drawn. Well, the issue here is that international interventions not only have this effect of preserving the cost of war during a conflict, but can also cause wars to start. So we need to think about how actors are going to behave in bargaining situations, knowing that an international intervention is possible, or suspecting that an international intervention is not possible. And that's going to affect how the parties bargain at this negotiation stage. So think about this. Imagine that you're a rebel group, and you know that the costs of war are going to be really large for you. So when you're in negotiations, what's that going to do for you? Well, it's going to put you in a situation where you're going to want to be very conservative with your bargaining demands. You're going to be very reluctant to start a war precisely because the costs of war are so bad for you, right? If an outside option of fighting a war is costly to you and it's painful to you, you're probably not going to be as willing to engage in it. So in a situation where costs are very, very large, you're not going to want to initiate a war. But now let's think about this. Let's add an international intervention to the realm of possibilities here. So you're still a rebel group, and now the costs of war for you are not going to be as large as they were. If you fight a war this time, an intervention, an intervention may rescue you later. So you're not going to be paying the full cost of war. You're going to get a smaller cost of war. Well, now think about your situation. Are you going to be more inclined to initiate a war here? Well, the answer is yes. You're going to be more demanding at the bargaining table precisely because the costs of war are going to be less for you. And so when you're engaging in, say, a risk-return trade-off, you're going to be more aggressive and you're going to be making demands that sometimes won't be met. And it's going to be true, or at least more often true, than in a situation where you're paying the full cost of war. So what we effectively see here is something known as moral hazard. Intervention is supposed to make the world more efficient, but it also creates wars that would not occur otherwise. So it's true that interven international interventions and expectation may be welfare improving once you impose them in a, conf in a conflict that's going on. They can also create inefficiencies by virtue of the fact that a war would not be taking place if it wasn't for the fact that an intervention would occur later on. So the idea behind moral hazard here, why does it get the name? Well, you're trying to do something moral here. You're trying to reduce the costs of war. That's supposed to be a good thing. That's so supposed to be something that everyone should support. And yet what ends up happening is that you can't differentiate between these cases where your perverse effect is causing more wars to happen. And as a result of that, more wars happen and things go bad for you. So not only do you sometimes get the good thing, sometimes you will succeed in not creating wars that wouldn't happen otherwise. And you would be helping out the sides by reducing the cost of conflict. But implicit in being able to do that is the fact that you also have to be paying for these costs of war, or rather the cost of intervention, and the consequences of a war being started precisely because an intervention is in the realm of possibilities in the future. So again, we see another situation where intervention isn't always the greatest thing, and this is just the price you pay if you want to engage in those sorts of operations. All right, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.